The Backrooms has millions of fans, well over 100 million, and every single individual enjoys a different aspect of the Backrooms. Some like Kane Pixel's videos, some like my videos, some hate both of those and like other videos. But what we can all agree on is our love for liminal horror. The ability to get lost in this never-ending scene of melancholic nostalgia forever. And since there are so many fans of that, over the last four years, several different canons and lore systems have popped up about the Backrooms. From the Wikidots canons, to the Fandoms canons, to the Liminal Archives, to whatever this is, today I'm going to be embarking on a journey to explain every single Backrooms canon and what I think their pros are, what I think their cons are, and everything about them. This video is super long, so if you enjoy it, I'll leave a like for my eyes. They're currently melting out of their sockets after reading this entire script. So firstly, we need to identify what a canon is as it relates to the Backrooms lore. In this instance, a canon is a set of rules, lore, characters, designs, and other things that go along with each other to form a readable parameter of sorts. Now, these are different people's interpretations on how the Backrooms was created and how it works. That's what a canon would be inside of the Backrooms lore. Unlike most canons in other fan bases, Backrooms canons tend to overlap and dip into each other and all still work together in a weird, twisted way. Which just, to me, adds to more of that confusion. And if the Backrooms is anything, it is confusing. And that's why we all love it. Canons are not simply the Backrooms Wikidot website versus the Fandom website versus the Liminal Archives website. Those are not canons in and of themselves. Those are vessels where canons are created in. Wow, that sounded really smart. Cool. Anyways, first up, I want to go over the six or seven different canons from the Backrooms Wikidot. The Wikidot describes them as, quote, When wandering throughout the Backrooms, some things may simply not make sense. A note from an unknown source, documenting destruction. A level which feels too reminiscent of certain events. No matter what, it's impossible to deny the fact that stories exist. It's not that we don't acknowledge these stories and events, it's the fact that they dip into each other, shatter each other's tales, breaking away at what founded these stories in the first place. They break laws established early on, and they show no indication of stopping. So you get a pretty good idea that the canons really are not a strict set of rules, they're more just guidelines. But anyways, with all that blabbering done, let's get into the actual canons. Like I said, there are six or seven of them so far on the Wikidot, and then there's a bunch more on the fandom, and there's some on the Liminal Archives, and I'm going to go over Cam Pixels as well. I'll be describing their outlines, their high points, and some of their levels and other key entities and stuff. I cannot go over every single detail, obviously, and the video will be 10 hours long if I did, which some of you would probably enjoy. Anyways, without further ado, let's get it. The Desolation Canon. The Desolation Canon focuses on humanity's ability, or rather non-ability, to survive inside the infinite labyrinth of liminal spaces that we call the Backrooms. Its lore only has a few levels inside, and even fewer entities and objects. Now probably, I would venture to say this is the most popular canon that you all have heard of, and you probably take part of this canon, even if you didn't know it. The levels that find themselves underneath this canon's umbrella are level 0, through 10. I'm gonna try to stop saying canon so much, but if you can tell me how many times to say canon in the comments, I'll pin your comment. Anyways, levels 0 through 10 are here in this lore. Those are the main original ones. It also includes a sub-level of level 4. You can't forget about that one. There are just two entities inside of this lore, and those are Facelings and Hounds. And as far as objects go, there's only one. The Recordless Player. As you can see, this lore really involves nostalgia and how it relates to the human psychology. It's pretty much just the original stuff, the main 11 levels, the OGs, whatever you want to call it. Now, this one is actually a lot of people's favorite, and many believe this is the one true canon. The main one, the only one that matters, and the only one that people should listen to. However, I think it's boring just to have 11 levels. Yes, I love these first 11, don't get me wrong, I love it, but I also love the infinite places and the never-ending aspect of the backrooms. Anyways, that was the Desolation Canon. Pretty much, if you just think that the first 11 levels are all that there should be in the backrooms, this is the canon for you. Next is the Industrialization Canon. The following paragraph is how it describes itself. Humanity has settled into the backrooms, creating societies which echo 
the ones back home, for better and for worse. The horrors of creeping monsters and liminality crumble away as humanity finds its own horrors to replace them with. Alongside the monotony, a decades-long fight for superiority as Top Dog is shaken to its core as a mysterious company known as the Backrooms Robotics enters the fray and threatens not just the status quo, but the entirety of the Backrooms as a whole. In the chaos, many hope to rise and truly bring the backrooms to peace once and for all. But peace in the wrong perspective may be more dangerous than anything seen before. So that's the gist of the canon. It's about building a life inside of lifeless places, existing where you shouldn't. And specifically how hard it is to do that. The levels underneath the umbrella are level 566 and level 522. Both of these levels are buildings with a ton of gizmos and technology and industrialization put inside of them. They're relatively safe as well, and they're both really deep inside the lore. You know, they're both 500 levels, so I doubt many people could even get to them. I know you couldn't because you're a loser, but yeah. The entities along with this canon are Entity 82 and 120. Now, 82 is Coco, which is kind of a sentient AI system on a computer, and 120 is a AI robot type entity. So I like to think of this canon as almost a steampunk version. It's the idea that humans and technology coexisting inside of a hellscape like the backrooms can't really happen. And like the description said, this canon really focuses on the one group known as the Backrooms Robotics. If you want a video of me going over every single group or like group of people in the Backrooms, let me know. I'm going to talk about some of them in this video. I'm not going to go into too much depth. There's too much lore. Might be another video. Like I said, tell me if you want that. But if you like the idea of steampunk meets the Backrooms, then you're going to like the industrialization canon. On to the next, the Pantheon Canon. Oh lord, this is a big one. So let me summarize. This canon is the idea that the backrooms at one time were home to a ton of very powerful beings. Each of these beings controlled a different part of reality. They were like a family until the first ever human somehow found their way inside of the backrooms. These powerful creatures and, and beings or whatever you want to call them wanted to rule over the humans. And the humans didn't like it, and yada yada yada, there was a rebellion, the humans overthrew this pantheon of creatures, scattering them to different parts of the complex, and yeah. So the pantheon is way more esoteric. It has this supernatural view of the backrooms, focusing mainly on its metaphysical and spiritual aspects, and not necessarily the just liminal aspect. It really dives deep into the forces that created it all. There's simply so much lore in the Pantheon canon that I simply cannot touch on all of it this video. It would be impossible. But the levels that go along with it are level 51, level 389, 216, 49.2, 979, the hub, and level help. All of these levels have very similar themes of otherworldly and supernatural atmospheres with strange effects and themes of abandonment and ruin. Many people also like this canon because it makes the back room seem less humanized and more mystified. It makes it seem as if it's a place that's steeped in mythos and stories and not logic and reason. There are many, many gods and creators in this canon, and as I said, there's too many to go over, but each of them play different roles in creating the backrooms and controlling it. The entities involved under this umbrella are ones like the Keymaster and Blanche, which as you already know, are both extremely powerful, ethereal, otherworldly beings that have control over the physical atmosphere in the backrooms. Think of this canon as the Greek mythology of the backrooms. If you like that, then you'll probably enjoy it in its lore. The Simulation Canon and Even though you might think this canon is saying that the Backrooms is just a big simulation controlled by a Sim Master, you'd be wrong. Although that is what some people believe to be a true canon, this is not what that is. This specific one is mainly about humanity and its survival in the Backrooms over the last thousand plus years. Essentially, the evolution of humans and the Backrooms simultaneously from the beginning of time and it's described like this. Its pages are connected mainly through its themes of being mostly about humans, incorporating as much other Backrooms writing as possible, and generally feeling more grounded. The Backrooms is a weird, wild place that can get as wacky as it wants, but the canon will always follow humans, 
human-based issues and human-feeling narratives. In Sim, you won't usually get a character with powers or having extremely supernatural stuff happen. If it does, it usually happens for a narrative reason. Most people in the canon are just people trying to get by. Anyone from a lone survivor to the leader of a dictatorship follows this rule. Besides its rigid timeline, that's basically as much identity as it has. I try to stick to it as religiously as I can, especially in the age of canons such as the Pantheon. So as you can see, this is pretty much about people surviving the labyrinth of rooms and hallways with nothing too fancy or crazy added. The canon also includes a pretty cool timeline of events as it's proposed that the backrooms existed, dating all the way back to 1000 BCE, all the way up to future societies thousands and thousands of years away. It relies on humanity's achievements and also those achievements as it relates to the backrooms and the history progressing in a linear line. Pretty much all that fancy stuff is to say it's literally like real life evolution but inside the backrooms. It also involves old civilizations like the lost civilization that are prominent in the descriptions of the lore here. I think it's pretty dang cool to be honest. It really just shows how the backrooms and people have always been in contact and they grew together in a strange way. This canon shows backrooms and its levels going from very simple scenes of wilderness and stone rooms and small towns with less liminality all the way up to what it is now with the infinite rooms and infinite complexes that we know today. So if you would like to read about the evolution of people and the physical spaces in the back rooms as they've grown over the last thousand years, you can check out this canon. It's really cool. I really like this one. I think it's such a dope idea that like cavemen were once in the back rooms and humans evolved while the back room spaces evolved. I think it's super dope. Humans in back rooms progressing together. Who doesn't love that? Next canon, please. The Terror hotel canon this one is based inside of backrooms <laughs> it is pretty based but it's inside of backrooms level five so its reach really isn't that broad and definitely not as broad as the pantheon or simulation cannons but the entities and objects inside of level five and its sub levels are all that are involved here the logo of the canon is a silhouette of an entity known as the beast of level five which if you don't know, is this weird eldritch horror type creature that seems to have control over level five and its domains. So I venture to say that that entity is the center point of the canon. Welcome, welcome. Please don't be so afraid. We are not many here, mind you. Our small group of dedicated workers maintain the hotel in the way which you see it before you at the present moment. And despite this place being infinite, we still try our best to make the experience of our customers one that is pleasant. Yes, pleasant. On the topic of our customers, between you and me, you better have something going for you. We take our duties and obligations most seriously here at this hotel, and this includes making sure our visitors' final resting place lies right here where they stand. But let's not get too far ahead of ourselves here. You're one of us now, and hopefully things will remain that way for a long, long time. This canon is really full of sinister undertones. It's the idea that the outside safety of level five and its hotel rooms and hallways is a facade. It's a mask, a cover for the true powers that be. The article says that there are much more dark forces at work, forces beyond our comprehension. Entities like the housekeeper and the bellhopper and the comedian are in this level, as well as the beast level five and the concierge. Pretty much hotel themed entities are inside this canon. The only levels here, of course, are level 5, and a sub-level, level, level 5.1. This canon just really focuses on how dark level 5 in and of itself is, even though the level gets overlooked constantly as just, you know, just a hotel that's infinite, it has much more esoteric and dark meanings behind it, and that's what this canon dives deep into. So if you like that, <laughs> then you're gonna enjoy it. And finally, for the Wikidot, is the Unmasked canon. Now this canon follows the group known as the Masked Maidens. It follows them around the back rooms as they try to destroy every other group that we all know and love or hate. Specifically Meg. They hate Meg. The Maidens believe that Meg is very corrupt and they almost view them as a plague that's destroying the back rooms. So this canon seeks to purify that and scourge them from view. Levels in this canon really take on strange features and descriptions like level 67. It literally just serves human meat cakes to people that go there. And level 10.1 is literally a carnivorous lake 
that consumes anything that touches it. The canon is very dark, very macabre, mainly focusing on the evil of people and their involvement inside of these liminal spaces and how they're ruining the back rooms. It treats people as a sickness, a virus that needs to be healed by any means necessary. The entities in this canon are no different from that. They're actually really cool. Entity 126, Scarecrows, and Entity 182, the Masked Messengers. These entities watch, and they wait, and they hide in plain sight. They try to heal levels whenever they can by removing people. They topple entire groups and organizations by hiding in the shadows, and waiting to attack. They're you know, just the normal background stuff, of course. The people in this canon use objects like wall masks to spy and maiden's ink to write letters and communicate secretly with each other. It's all very under the table and shady. So if you want to join in with dismantling everything besides yourselves, then this canon is for you. The Masked Maidens want to return the back rooms to its rightful place as an empty, carnivorous, liminal hellscape. Honestly, I don't blame them. People kind of suck. People pretty much suck in general. But do we need to kill everybody? I don't really think so. Still a really cool canon, though. Okay, finally, that is all of the canons from the Wikidot. There are two more, but they have very little lore and info with them. Those are the Black Knights and the Decay canon. I'll link them below if you want to read into them. I'm not going to cover them at this moment, like I said. Not enough lore. They don't pass the lore check. But as you can see, these canons are all vastly, vastly different. And they all really take different approaches to understanding the backrooms. Just like us as fans do. Some people like the idea of people living in the backrooms forever so they follow the simulation theory. Some hate that idea, and they want to see all the groups and all the people out of it, so they follow the Masked Maidens canon. Others like it simple and liminal, so they follow the Desolation canon. There's literally something for everyone, and I think that's pretty cool. But oh no, <laughs> uh, we aren't even close to being done. And this video is probably like 20 minutes long already, but we're just gonna keep going. We still have two more wikis and a YouTuber's canon to cover. So buckle up, fellas. The Fandom. This is another wiki that chronologizes the backrooms and its lore. So of course, it has its own set of canons and storylines, but surely, surely there can't be too many of them, right? Uh, okay. The first two canons here have a bunch of lore, so I'm gonna go over them, and then we'll do a little lightning round of canons because the rest of them don't have as much lore. The Antagonverse. This canon describes itself as one that focuses on the middle of the interworkings of the backrooms. You know, you often hear about the line between reality and unreality when referring to the backrooms, how it's really blurry. This canon is that blurry line. It's the embodiment of it. This canon sees the backrooms as something way more than just a flesh and blood place and more of a manifestation of a bigger part of the universe. And thus, it follows the journey of two sets of twins, each of these sets of twins being from a different dimension, but both finding themselves stuck inside the backrooms, forced to explore the liminality forever. The Antagonverse really shows the reach of the backrooms and how not only people on Earth are infected. So if you want to see other alien-type creatures and other different humans from different universes here, this is the canon to read up on. The Armaverse. This one is unique. The Armaverse canon focuses on the relationship between real life and the backrooms, and how those two used to live in harmony until an unknown and powerful force called the Void emerged itself and messed up that beautiful harmony and peace thing. The Void would bring chaos and terror to Earth and the backrooms alike, turning the backrooms from a safe place to a dangerous hellscape. Among the chaos of all this Void stuff happening, three heroes would emerge and attempt to vanquish the Void from the backrooms, and all the bad that it brought with it. Pretty cool story, actually. This canon treats the backrooms like a place that's been infected by this dark void energy. And it says that the levels before the void came were safe and empty, but the void brought deadly levels and entities that are forced to exist here now. And that the void is this dangerous thing that's tangible that's spreading itself over the infinity of the backrooms and infecting it. Again, pretty cool. If you like the idea of dark creatures crawling out of the void and this darkness overtaking backrooms levels and infecting it, then you're gonna like this canon, I bet. Now, the rest of these 10 canons are more simply understood by their names or short descriptions, so it's gonna be time for a canon lightning round. 
That sounded cooler in the script, I'm sorry. The Atlas Archive is about doom, and the idea that it's not worth even trying to survive in the back rooms because you're not going to escape anyways. The Behavioral Suite canon focuses on humans and their minds during their journey here, and their stories and their mad thoughts, and going insane and losing that sense of humanity while still being lost in the halls. Most of the articles in this canon are cynical and cold, but some are very like happy and whimsical, which fits with how the back rooms changes humans minds. Pretty much the canon is very psychology based and it shows the impacts the backrooms has on the psyche of the people stuck there. The Convergence canon is an extension of the Pantheon canon, but it's focusing on those godlike creatures that control the backrooms. The levels here again are focused on fantasy and this grandiosity instead of the usual just liminal empty humbuzz. It focuses more on the ethereal energy like Pantheon. The Empyrean verse canon is the idea that one single godlike entity known as the Exalted One created the backrooms in its entirety. The canon states the birth of the backrooms was eons ago and that it's much much older than we all believe it to be. And the backrooms is kind of treated as this small speck in the huge expanse of cosmos in this canon. The backrooms incursion canon focuses mainly on the sci-fi and action parts of the backrooms. Instead of wandering around aimlessly with no hope of survival, in the incursion canon, you actually explore the backrooms as if it's a game with a linear timeline. In this lore, the backrooms began during a great cataclysm that happened outside of our reality, but it was so big that it bled into our reality and drug people into the backrooms with it. Now, people who fell into this backrooms reality place have banded together and have vowed to explore it and make sense of it and survive it. It's a futuristic themed canon and it kind of reminds me of Starfall or Destiny or something like that, but it's pretty neat. I've actually never seen this take before. I, I like it. It's pretty cool. The Liminality Canon focuses on the nightmare of being in the backrooms itself, the dread of being stuck in the past, because that's all you can think about when you're here. It follows one specific guy named Masui as he no clips into the backrooms and explores the levels. Eventually, this guy finds friends to do it with, and they discover something dark on their journey through the backrooms. This thing is known only as the Entity, and these people, they realize how big of a danger the Entity is to everyone. And this canon shows how these people work together to explore these empty rooms to find ways to save them from the Entity and its destruction. Lim Cosmology Canon focuses on the madness and hostility of the physical backrooms, and it treats the backrooms as a predator seeking a meal almost. It pretty much shows the backrooms is actually trying to consume you as the wanderer. Most of the levels and things in this canon are written pessimistically, and everything has this nihilism undertone. Nothing matters, so why should you even try to survive the backrooms? It's going to eat you anyways. The surrealness and psychological horror is the main aspect of this canon, and the psychological part is more dangerous than entities or people. And finally is the canon called Zeta. Now the canon Zeta is just about one single group, a criminal group, inside of the back rooms. This group started out helping Meg and other groups research entities and their behavior. But after doing that, they realized how powerful entities are specifically compared to humans. They also realized that humans would never be able to leave the back rooms or survive it, so Zeta somehow convinced other groups to rally to their cause, in turn creating this really large network of people that just want to turn every single person and human into an entity by any means necessary. You know, since they think that only entities can survive and people can't, they want to turn everybody into an entity so you can survive. It's kind of like the Whisperers storyline from The Walking Dead, if you've seen that. Zeta believes that you have to become an entity to survive the entities, if you know what I'm saying. Yeah, it's actually pretty neat. And that is almost every single canon from the Backrooms wiki dot and fandom. I only skipped over a couple because they were more repetitive or convoluted than they should have been, but those are all from the wiki dot and the fandom. The last website's canon that I want to touch on is called the Liminal Archives. Now, this website focuses mainly on, of course, the liminality in its most basic or its most advanced form. They describe the Backrooms as, quote, the backroom system is many things, and individual levels can vary, but most can be characterized by many of the same elements. Man-made architecture, in decay, and distorted beyond comfort. Digital creations extrapolated into physical form. Lost media now found with new identity. 
each level existing as part of the whole, rarely isolated. These themes can be found in abundance. This website has less than 100 levels and entities and objects combined, and they all focus on the deep and psychological liminality of the backrooms. The idea that you're alone forever with nothing but your thoughts. They have groups and they have entities as well, they're just much less commonplace. It's actually kind of similar to the Desolation Canon from the Wikidot, where the Desolation Canon thinks only levels 0 through 10 are canon. This website, the Luminal Archives, is kind of like a whole website just for that. As you can tell, there is quite literally something for everyone in one of these canons. Now, the levels that I've gone over on this channel and the levels on each of these respective websites that I just talked about, they don't all have to be part of a canon. There's no real rules about it. After all, why would there even be rules about a ruleless place, you know? But I'm sure each and every one of you can find one of these canons that you like the most, and you can read into its lore more if you're interested. Like I said, I physically cannot document every single detail about every canon, there's simply just too much, and I'm just a wee YouTuber. But I hope that after this video, you really realize just how vast the backrooms is, and why it is so popular among so many people, because there really is something for everyone. These cannons are like the Cheesecake Factory menu, bro. It's like infinite possibilities, and I love it. I love every single part of it. No matter what aspect of the backrooms and its concept that you enjoy, there is a cannon that backs it up. There's something for literally every person. I know I just said that five times. I don't even care. Anyways, the last canon that I want to touch on today is the Kane Pixels canon, which is not dissimilar from the other canons I talked about today, but it is unique in the fact that it's shown in a completely different form. The found footage form. Kane's story arc begins in level zero. Where else is it gonna start? But as we get deeper and deeper, we see a few other levels and locations, like the pool rooms. We also see a sinister backstory brewing underneath that leads to a company that started it all. Async. This company, of course, tapped into the backrooms and is researching it for multiple uses, like waste disposal, object removal, and so on. But they didn't expect for it to bite back the way it has. Kane's Cannon, no matter how you feel about it, has made this backrooms thing revolutionary for the creepypastas in general. It literally changed and revolutionized online internet horror. It skyrocketed the popularity of this niche, for better and for worse, yes, but I think it's a pretty darn cool thing to watch. I love the found footages, it adds such a real aspect to it, and I really enjoy the psychological horror involved. Many people like Kane's canon, and many people don't, it's very polarizing. I like it for what it is, I love the footage part of it, but if you like watching the Backrooms canon with this corrupt government undertone, then the async canon is probably for you. In conclusion, my voice is shot, I've been drinking water for two hours. I think I've said everything I need to say. The video is already longer than my forehead, but there is literally a canon for everything inside the Backrooms universe. And it proves to everybody that the lore in the Backrooms is the opposite of one-dimensional. You know, some say that canons ruin the Backrooms. It made it have too much lore, it expanded it too much. But I say there can never be too much lore because the Backrooms has always been infinite from the beginning. And if there's only like five levels, it's too boring. These cannons add an ability to look at the backrooms through a billion different lenses and see it and enjoy it and respect it for a billion different reasons. Anyways, that's it for the video. If you enjoyed this video, like I said, please leave a like. Check out my Twitter and Instagram below if you want to see my personal existence for some reason. You don't have to, but it's free to follow me over there. Also, check out my third channel, Spoogly, if you want to see those kind of videos over there. I upload like video essays and stuff. It's, again, pretty neat. I love and appreciate you all, and make sure you tell somebody you love them. Life is too short not to. With all that said and done, I'll see you in the next video.